This is Business PNG. Welcome. My name is Imra Pana, and with me tonight on the show, I have Ms. Laura Bailey, Country Manager PNG from the World Bank Group. Welcome to the show. Thanks very much for having me. Now, Laura, as the Country Manager, could you please explain briefly the role of World Bank Group in Papua New Guinea? Sure, I'd be happy to. The World Bank Group is an intergovernmental organization that works with governments and people in countries around the world to alleviate poverty and improve people's lives. And here in Papua New Guinea, we have two important parts of the World Bank group working very hard together. One is the World Bank, which I manage. We work directly with government on programs designed to improve the economy and improve people's well-being. In addition, we have the International Finance Corporation, which we call the private sector arm of the World Bank. And they work to directly with businesses to improve economic activity and generate jobs. So in your role um, with the World Bank, how do you see your institution in assisting in the further development of PNG's private sector? Well, the private sector is really, really important. We know from evidence around the world that it is the private sector that increases economic activity and generates jobs. And so it's important for a country like Papua New Guinea that's growing quickly, both population and economy, to pay attention to what's happening in the private sector. In a country like Papua New Guinea that is dominated by the minerals, oil and gas sector, it's especially important that government be very mindful of the kind of policies and programs mm -hmm. that they create because what we want, what we look for, what we hope for is a very diversified economy, an economy that doesn't just depend on oil, gas and mining, but also has jobs being created in manufacturing, in services, in agribusiness, across the spectrum of economic activities. And for a small country like PNG, I know it's the big brother of the Pacific, but on the global stage, it's actually quite a small player. It's also important that Papua New Guinea's private sector be very well connected to the regional economy and to the globally integrated economy. Now you mentioned IFC, which is International Finance Corp, is a private arm of the World Bank Group. Can you tell us a bit more about the different things that the World Bank is doing to help create a positive economic climate in PNG and how those ac activities are complementary to the work done by IFC? Absolutely. First, maybe I'll tell you a bit about what the World Bank does. Our primary counterpart is government. We work with government on a range of activities designed to improve lives and livelihoods. And in the area of private sector development, our primary role is to work with government to create an enabling environment. What do I mean when I say enabling environment? Well, I mean to create a space where smart people with good ideas can create economic activities. They're entrepreneurs and then to create an opportunity and programs that support them like access to finance or training and credit so that those small little entrepreneurial activities can get bigger and become SMEs, small and medium enterprises. And then to be sure that the tax system, the system of business registration and regulation, all of the things that make it either easy or difficult for a business to grow are organized in such a way that these businesses can grow and thrive. So that's the World Bank's responsibility. Our responsibility is to work with government in order to create a positive enabling environment. In order to do that, there are four primary things that we can do. We can work directly with government to look at their policies, their investment policies and their tax policies, to see if maybe there are some things in those policies that are hindering businesses rather than helping them. We can also try and bring people together, connect Papua New Guinea's business and government leaders with bright ideas and interesting innovations from around the world. Because as an intergovernmental organization with a span across 187 countries, we have a unique ability to connect Papua New Guinea to the rest of the world. 
it's also important for us to support the private sector in having its voice heard so that government understands what are the concerns of business associations, of trade unions, of the business sector in general. All of those things that I'm discussing have to do with how does the government look at the private sector? What can it do to help to make it possible for jobs to be created and for businesses to grow? But the International Finance Corporation, the private sector arm of the World Bank Group, has an even more important role to play, and that is the role of direct investment in the private sector. So the IFC can actually invest directly in Papua New Guinean and international businesses. It can take equity positions, it can become a part owner, it can provide debt financing, and it can provide advisory services. And in doing this, it helps create the momentum for a private sector that is diversifying and growing and creating jobs. For example, right now here in Papua New Guinea, the IFC has a very dramatically increasing portfolio. And that portfolio includes investments in the financial services sector, in manufacturing, and in agribusiness. So if you imagine these two arms of the World Bank Group, one working with government to create a positive enabling environment, and the other, IFC, working directly with businesses, you can see the kind of synergies that can be created. Well, I, I guess uh, the World Bank as a, as a group is obviously doing a lot in terms of uh, both the government and the private sector. Uh, we're about to take a short commercial break. We're on show with Miss Laura Bailey on Business PNG. Welcome back to the segment viewers. You're with me on Business PNG and tonight we're talking to Miss Laura Bailey, the country manager, PNG, the World Bank Group. Thank you once again. Now before the commercial break, we, you touched on the work that the World Bank and the IFC, um, some of the great work that they're doing in the mining sector with also the private sector. Are there other, or oh, sorry, the agriculture sector? Um, what other sectors is there that, that you're actually uh, proactively involved in? Thanks for asking that. So in Papua New Guinea, of course, if we think about the economy, mining oil and gas and agriculture, that represents a lot of the economic activity. But of course there's lots more going on. As Papua New Guinea's economy becomes more diversified and more mature, you have things arising including manufacturing, yes. you have services, which includes tourism, hospitality, health services, education services. And these are all areas where both the government and the private sector have a role to play. One of the things that's been very troubling for many Papua New Guineans, both private sector business leaders and government leaders, is the fact that as the country's economy grows and as the revenue rolls in from mining oil and gas, we aren't seeing the kind of improvements in the quality of life and the living standards that Papua New Guineans deserve to have. Health and education standards, health and education outcomes are not rising as quickly as we would like to see. Now this is a problem that persists throughout the Pacific, so Papua New Guinea is not alone, but both the World Bank and the IFC are trying to bring our complementary skills to bear to try and understand better how could health and education outcomes be improved by both public and private sector initiatives. So, in the education sector, for example, the World Bank is working e intensively with government as well as some other development partners to improve the quality of education. Now that we have the free education initiative by government, we all want to see that when children go to school, that they have a quality education. There's probably a role for the private sector there. We know that the private sector is actively providing education, private schools, church-run mm -hmm. schools, but we also know that the private sector can be involved very effectively in training teachers, in supporting improved curriculum, and in developing and providing reading materials and school books and textbooks. So you can see how there's a connection there. Uh, the health sector is also something that we know Papua New Guinea really needs to work on. Uh, we have um, Papua New Guineans who suffer from basic health uh, problems 
the health sector needs to be more effective at reaching out to them. And that's going to be something that's going to require both government and the private sector. So the World Bank and IFC, together with government, are beginning two pieces of research in the coming weeks. One on the role of the private sector in providing basic preventative health services, and the other on health financing options to better understand what are the different ways in which health care can and should be financed in a country like Papua New Guinea. So we have this sort of interesting uh, complementarity between the World Bank's work and IFC's work. World Bank working primarily with government, IFC working primarily with the private sector. But there are times when those complementary efforts come together in very special ways, and I'd like to mention two of them. Uh, the IFC is most well known in Papua New Guinea for the work that it does directly in supporting and accelerating the growth of key businesses in important sectors like financial services, telecommunications, and agribusiness. But they also provide what are called advisory services. So for example, for more than two years, the IFC has been working with the Investment Promotion Authority, trying to help IPA become a more effective and dynamic promoter of investment in the country. And at the same time, they've been working on a very small but very effective program on alternative dispute resolution. Because as it turns out, one of the most costly problems for businesses, small and large in Papua New Guinea, is how to manage commercial disputes. And as we all know, the last thing you want to do is go to court because it's a long, time-consuming, costly yes. endeavor. So the work the IFC is doing with the Investment Promotion Authority or with the Alternative Dispute Resolution System with the courts and the Department of Justice represent examples of how the World Bank Group can assist the government and the private sector to find what are some of the constraints and to try and alleviate those constraints. understand that the World Bank and IFC are doing some research on landowner companies as well um, and their role as a tool to spread the wealth from extractive industries. Can you please elaborate a bit more on that? Sure, I'm happy to. In some countries we're doing in-depth case studies and Papua New Guinea is one of those countries. As an economy that's dominated by the extractive industries, oil, gas and mining, the dynamics of employment creation and job creation here in PNG are actually quite special. But there are lots of other countries that, like PNG, find themselves dependent on oil, gas, and mining. So we know that there are lessons that we could be learning here that would have relevance for other countries in the world. Now, what's special about PNG are these landowner companies. Now, when we speak of landowner companies, we're referring to the companies, the entities that were created by groups of landowners who receive payments, benefit streams from oil, gas, or mining companies, royalties, compensation payments, and dividends. Now, traditionally, many of these companies are simply what we would call passive revenue vehicles. They accept revenues from the mining company and they distribute them to their members in the community. However, the interesting dynamic that you see here at Papua New Guinea that is quite unique and potentially very instructive for the rest of the world is that some Papua New Guinea landowner companies are becoming much more sophisticated. They are no longer passive recipients of royalties or dividends. They are businesses who are growing dynamically and are increasingly going beyond the limits of the extractive industry that was their source of original capital. Why is that important? Well, it's important because you see them taking on a regional and a global significance. And we think that the ability of Papua New Guinea landowner companies to separate their social purpose and their business purpose is the key to this transformation. Now, going straight back into the landowner companies that you were discussing, is there any standout example that you could share with us? Definitely. So as I was mentioning, the research we're doing is trying to figure out what is special or unique about these landowner companies that seem to have moved beyond the role of being passive recipients of uh, royalties and dividend payments from resource companies. 
So we began to do this in-depth research, and we looked at a range of them, and we began to see five or six of the landowner companies really standing out. These include the Inichua Group, which is uh, linked to Lahir, IPI, linked to Porgra, Star Mountain, which is linked to Octeti, Trans Wonderland, mm -hmm. and National Catering. And in each of these cases, you're seeing a dynamic business that is moving beyond the geographical regions of the resource project that started it, moving beyond the extractive industries activities that were its its area of origin and becoming quite sophisticated quite successful and when we try to dissect what makes these companies successful we've got two or three important characteristics one is that they are equally mindful of their social base and their business model now what do i mean by that well they're a landowner company they were created as a collective entity to receive and share the benefits from the resource project. And this is a very Papua New Guinean kind of entity because of the collective nature of land ownership in Papua New Guinea. And these companies represent that collective opportunity to share wealth. But none of these very successful landowner companies behave as if they are a social entity alone. Mm -hmm. They also have a very firm commercial base. And what they're able to do is they're able to use a very sensible, hard-headed, business-minded commercial model, but also play on the strengths of the social base that was the formation of the landowner group to begin with. And in doing so, they're able to reach outside of their geographic area, outside of the extractive industries, oil, gas, or mining project where they started, and begin to work in other areas, in other sectors, in other parts of Papua New Guinea. And in a few cases, they're even beginning to reach internationally. And we think that some of the key elements of success, as I mentioned, using both their social base and their commercial model, but also having a very clear and explicit understanding about what their business goals are, separate from their social or community goals. And the third element that seems to be quite important is being very clever in using, finding and using skills, some from Papua New Guineans and some from expatriate technicians. And those expatriates who work the best in these landowner companies seem to be people who have a genuine commitment to development and a real focus on building the skills of their Papua New Guinean co-workers. And when we see these things all lining up together, then you begin to see the real success, the kind of success you see with Trans Wonderland, with Anichua, with NCS, with Star Mountain, and with IPI. Now, I must say, not every landowner company makes it in this way. We have examples of landowner companies that continue 10, 15 years after the opening of a mine to be simply a receptacle for revenues to be paid in and payments to be shared to the community. And certainly there's nothing wrong with that. We also unfortunately see examples of landowner companies that are created and then fall apart because they don't have the right commercial model. But I think it's very instructive, both here in Papua New Guinea and for other countries around the world who are struggling with this challenge of how to transform oil, gas, and mining wealth into broader, diversified economic growth, the landowner companies of Papua New Guinea have something very interesting to teach us. So just going back to some of the activities, how do you or would you see the private sector play a major role or a contributing role in hand in hand with the World Bank? Well, I must say, even though the World Bank's job is primarily to work with government, we know from our experience around the world that the way that economies grow and that people's quality of life and standards of living improve is through the creation of sustainable jobs. And so the private sector is, is who creates jobs. And countries where the private sector is growing in size, is becoming more diverse, 
is allowing for people with bright ideas and entrepreneurial uh, spirits to start new businesses and grow them. We know that these are the countries where health and education outcomes are also going to improve and where the overall quality of life is going to improve. So the primary role of the World Bank in working with government is to help government create that enabling environment that we talked about at the beginning of the show. And the primary job of the International Finance Corporation, the IFC, is to directly help businesses to take advantage of that enabling environment. And our hope for Papua New Guinea is that as the national revenues from oil, gas, and mining continue to increase, that the World Bank's support to government in creating an enabling environment and the IFC's support to businesses to take opportunities and run with them will together create the kind of dynamic economic growth that will see Papua New Guinea in 2030 be a middle-income country with a thriving, diversified economy. Thanks so much, Laura, for being with me tonight and sharing some insights on what the World Bank Group is conducting in this country. Um, some great work and some great insight too. Thanks very much, it's been a pleasure. Thanks.